fantastic to uh, fantastic to be here. Uh, I tell you, when, when, you, when you work in uh, when you work in data centres, data centres are such a hot, exciting area. There's, there's never any there's never any reason not to find uh, you know, good good anecdote from the start of the the start of the day. Even though, even the most bizarre uh, places. I was in I was in Wuhan a couple of weeks ago. I was, try, I was trying to think about you know, what, what is there even anything in Wuhan which is which is data centre. Related. You know, even, even in Malta, you can work out that data centre is a real hub of uh, activity. Even in Malta, there's some really innovative uh, service providers who bring new types of cloud services into, into the market. But you know, here in London, it's really the hub globally for the data centre expertise. It's really you know, London and you know, New York are the hubs for data centre expertise. I think mean, it's fantastic to have a bed like this here in, here in London. You know, just, just within a 10 mile a radius of where we are today. There are about 63 you know, world-class co-location uh, data centers within a 10-mile radius, uh, radius of here. So there's a huge amount of uh, knowledge and uh, expertise in, uh, in, in this part of the, this part of the country. Um, my role in uh, Cisco is I'm actually responsible for our, for our data center uh, partners. So I'm responsible for our partners capability across Europe uh, Middle East, uh, Middle East, Africa. They let me boost today to present to to customers, which is a, which is a rare uh, treat. And it can't be because that's where you, that's where you get the real uh, the real feedback. I've been uh, with Cisco now for for around about uh, around about ten years. And I actually actually came to to Cisco just just when we started the entry into the data center market. So when I came here 10, 10 years ago, we we had one product. We just launched one. Uh, product uh, into the into the data center, which was the reason I came here. It was called the the MDS 9000 storage area networking uh, product. I don't know if any of you remember the uh, the MDS uh, the MDS 9000. We we had we had one we had one product, and I was in a in a room at our office in, in Bethel Lakes, which is about the uh, the Metro Airport. We had about five people in that room. That was our, that was our data center team there. Uh, ten, uh, 10 years ago, and we, we were getting really mixed feedback. You know, we were getting mixed feedback from the from the marketplace. So, um, so you some customers were you know, very interested in some compelling technology, but most customers would say, "Cisco, you know, you're new to the data center market. It's really different. You have to prove to us what you can really go and do in the marketplace." We were getting very mixed feedback from the from the analyst community. So they were saying, "Well, what are we trying?" To do, to do, but again, you have to really prove that you've got this credibility in the data center market. Very similar feedback from uh, from the partners that we had in the marketplace too. Ten years on, you know, thank goodness, it's very, very different. In uh, very, very different indeed. So what, what I want to talk to you about today is a, is a bit about our overall uh, traction that we're having in the marketplace for the data center. So where are we? You know, ten years, uh, ten years on. I'll talk at a very high level about the, the vision and the and the strategy that we have in the having the data center. Then I'll just wrap up talking about some of the practical conversations that we end up having with with customers on a regular basis. It's all very well talking about this in theory, but what are some of the practical uh, implications and what are some of the things on on customers and uh, customers' minds when we when we talk to them. So if I yeah, if I've cast back my mind, you know, ten years ago again, we were a very, very small portion of uh, Cisco's uh, Cisco's business. I mean, but today, yeah, in most of the countries that we we operate in, our data center business is is maybe fifteen to twenty percent of our overall of our overall revenue. So there's been a huge amount of investment that's gone in to our data center business, and it's extremely strategic to what we're doing. We're investing an awful lot in data centers. If you think about the way the whole world is world is changing, and everything is starting to gravitate towards the data center. All the mobile devices that you're using today, that information is flowing to and from the data center. The applications of data center gets backed up to the data center. We're just entering this world, which people refer to as the as the Internet of Things or the Internet of uh, of everything, where you have sensors and smart devices absolutely everywhere, which all ends up all of that data. All of the apps that drive those sensors, they may end up residing in the in the data center. So it's very, very strategic 
from a from a from a from a company perspective. We've ten years off. We're very very uh, focused from a from a leadership perspective on what we do in the in the data centre core to our strategy. And you know we've done okay. So uh, we've bought multiple technologies to uh, to market over the last uh, ten years. So we started off with the storage area uh, networking. Then we so entered the data centre switching market with a, a technology range called called, uh, called Nexus. And then four years ago we, we came to market with a with a blade server uh, technology called, uh, called called UCS, which was uh, which was very uh, innovative. And I'll show you some more of the figures in a moment or so. But we've had a very strong market traction with, with UCS. It's the fastest market traction we've had with any technology that we that we brought to brought to the marketplace. So these these facts and figures they're all they're all fantastic and we're very proud of them. But the real the real key thing here is the feedback that we get from UCS about from the customer. And what the customer is telling us about UCS, what people who are using UCS are telling us, is they realise it's an architecture, new innovative architecture built from the inside out to do large scale virtualization and cloud. And they, they realize that, that, that by doing that, UCS is going to have an immediate business impact on, on their organization. So they realize they're going to the ability to, to reduce the cost of their infrastructure and do virtualization more cheaply. And they realize it's going to give them the ability to deploy new applications and services more, more quickly and easily. So that's, that's the, the benefit, really, of, uh, really of UCS. And the results of the marketplace have been yeah, fairly, uh, fairly dramatic. We're number, number two now uh, globally in terms of uh, Blade, uh, Blade server uh, market share. You know, currently you know, number three here in uh, in EMEA. Some countries are operating. We're, we're number two here in EMEA. Some countries we're being at number three. And you know, to get to that uh, position, you know, we've had to uh, you know, take on you know, many, many of the you know, very powerful you know, vendors who are out there in the in marketplace today. So uh, we're no longer the new kid on the block when it comes to data center technology. We're no longer the, the new kid on the block when it comes to compute and to server technology. We've got some very large installations across the world that people are using our UCS technology right at the heart of their right at the heart of their business. So you can be very confident about uh, exploring uh, UCS and the possibilities there within your own organisations. What we also have is a change in the terminology that's being used by the analyst community. And you heard about, you heard this earlier on today from uh, me with, with Georgia. I mean, I think the, the way that customers and the way that analysts are starting to think about this market is now very different indeed. So we're no longer just talking about server or compute environments. You can see here we're starting to talk about computing systems. We're starting to talk about integrated stacks. We're starting to talk about uh, reference architecture. So the whole terminology in the marketplace is starting, is starting to, to change. That's exactly what we heard from from Giorgio earlier on today. And to give you, give you an example of how quickly uh, we think that change is happening, approximately 30% of the UCS sales that we do today are delivered either in a completely integrated architecture or in a reference architecture. So the, so the willingness of the customers to, to move down that integrated or reference architecture route is, is increasing very, very dramatically Indeed, we expect the proportion of the UCS sales that we do being delivered in terms of an integrated architecture to really start to ramp up uh, very quickly over time. What we don't also, what we also don't want to uh, forget is our switching platform. We have a very powerful uh, switching platform in, uh, in our Nexus uh, portfolio. Which is, uh, which is the base in, in the marketplace today. We have been number one in terms of data center uh, switching, switching in, the, in the marketplace. And this is, a, this is a technology set 
which is going to start to evolve very, very quickly indeed. So you know, look, look out over the next a few weeks for pronouncements pertaining to changes and enhancements to, to our Nexus portfolio to give that whole switching environment more application centricity. So just as you know, Georgia talked about earlier on, we're moving to a world where the whole data system is going to become far more application centric, and I'll talk a bit more about that uh, later, later, on, later on today. But what we're finding is that customers uh, really see the, the benefits of integrating together those UCS <coughs> and those, uh, those next environments in the data centers, whether they're doing it ad hoc or whether they're doing it in terms of a reference architecture. So I'll talk a bit, uh, a bit more detail now about our data center, data center uh, vision and, uh, and our strategy uh, moving, uh, moving forward. One element which is core to our strategy is about choice. So we, we want to be open in terms of the, the vendors that we, that we work with. And we think that that openness in the marketplace creates more, more choice. For, uh, for our customers, it gives you more ability to do different types of things with, uh, with, with the organization. So a couple examples of choice would be from a, from a hyperlight perspective, as an example. So if you're open in terms of who we work with from a, from a hyperlight perspective, so we spend an awful lot of time, we do an awful lot of development with VMware. But equally, we do an awful lot of development uh, with, with Microsoft, around Microsoft uh, private the same way we do development with Citrix, we do development with, with Red Hat. So whatever choice you make as customers in terms of your hypervisor environment, we're going to support you in terms of those choices that you're making and have solutions available for you in the market. So we're, we're open in terms of who we work with from a hypervisor perspective. We're also open in terms of who we work with from a, from a storage perspective. So we work extremely closely with, uh, with NetApp. We also work with EMC, we also work with other storage vendors. So whatever choices you're making, whatever vendors you're working with from, from a storage perspective, we're giving you a choice in terms of the solution sets that are available to you uh, in the marketplace. The other aspect of, uh, of choice is, is really about core and context. What, what do I mean by core or context? So to, to some uh, customers, data centers are absolutely core to what they do. So maybe you're a, maybe you're a financial uh, institution, but you want to keep those skills really, really close to the people. You want to keep the integration skills. For some organizations, data centers are very context. So maybe, maybe, you're, maybe you're a school, uh, as, as an example, and all you want to do is you want to absorb uh, you know, infrastructure as a service or applications from, from the cloud. So there's a wide spectrum in terms of how important data center is for an organization, whether it's core or whether it's context. One of the things that we, that we want to do, part of our strategy, is to offer the, those, that choice of core context as solutions. So if data center is really core to, to what you do and you want to keep the integration and capability, you can very, as an example, very easily integrate technology from Cisco and from, from NetApp to build a solution set. You know, e equally, if maybe data center centers less context to you, you can buy a reference architecture where you're going to get a blueprint and it's going to have a feasible uh, performance. Right on the other side of the spectrum, if data center is truly you know, context to what you do, we work with cloud providers and we work with server providers in conjunction. Uh, with, our, with our technology partners to build, to help them build cloud services which are built on our infrastructure. So we want to provide that core context uh, choice to the, to the marketplace as well as being open in terms of the technology vendors that, uh, that we work with. The other way that we want to, to offer choice is to be open in terms of the applications that are certified on UCS and certified on, on our infrastructure. Our aim here is to make sure we're certified on all of the major 
applications that you're going to find uh, in your organization, whether they are uh, horizontally uh, based or whether they are vertically based uh, applications. So all, all of these applications that you see here, they're all certified on UCS infrastructure. So one key element of our strategy is about <coughs> choice. Another key element of our data center uh, strategy is about, uh, is about innovation. You know, we feel passionately that innovation is really about the business impact that we're having on, the, on you, the customer. So we're innovating at the end of the day to create a business impact for the customer, which really, if you, if you boil it all down, it manifests itself in two different ways. So I, I will be helping you to, to save money on your infrastructure, or I will be helping you to, to meet the needs of the marketplace far far more quickly. So everything we do in terms of our innovation framework is to, is to help you from a, from a business perspective. And we do innovation a couple of different uh, ways. One way we do innovation is through our own uh, research and development. We spend approximately five billion dollars a year on R and D. It's around about eleven percent of overall uh, revenue, which is very high uh, for a company of that size. Another key part of our uh, our innovation strategy is about acquisition. So we want to acquire the, the skills that uh, that we need, the innovation that we do need by buying companies in the in the market. And throughout the ten years that I've been here, you know, we've bought many. The organizations were a very big part of our overall data center and architecture uh, today. So I'll just, I'll just pick out, I'll just pick out one. About, about six months ago, uh, we launched an organization called uh, Cloudcare, a very, a very young, uh, innovative uh, company who built a private cloud uh, management software to wrap around uh, reference architectures like, like a FlexPod, uh, as, uh, as an example. The, the benefit of technology like, like Cloud is it can help you deploy your private cloud environments so a little simply and easily. I think we'll hear a lot more about, about Cloud yet uh, later on today. We've now rebranded that as the UCS Director. So if you're UCS Director, that's the Cloud Care or acquisition that we, uh, that we made about six months ago. The other way we want to innovate is through partnering. And you know, I don't think there's any better example of innovating through partnering than, than our relationship with, with NetApp. And the Flexbot reference architecture that we've brought out to, brought out to market. I mean, Flexbot, Flexbot has really been a stunning success over the last you know, two or three years. It surprised us the speed at which we're getting traction with the, with the, with the, with the Flexbot reference architecture. So that's innovation for the marketplace, which is driven through the partnership that we had with, with NetApp, which is really you know, giving great benefits to the, to the marketplace. So we want to continue to, to innovate and increase that business impact that we can have to do our own R&D through acquire, continuing to acquire organizations, but also, uh, also partnering. This is just some of the innovation that we brought to the market with, with UCS. Well, I'm not going to go into this in any, uh, in any, in any detail, but we really think we brought uh, the innovation to the market with, uh, with UCS. There are two things that I pick out in particular. So if, I'm talking, if I talk to a customer about why they buy into uh, UCS, the, the, they normally answer is either because of the service profiles that we have with UCS, you know, the ability to cascade into a virtualized environment far more quickly and easily, or it's about UCS manager. You know, the ability to give you the ability to, to manage that computer environment as, as a system. So we think through, through the R&D that we've done with, uh, with, with UCS, we've brought many different types of innovation into the marketplace today. Another part of our strategy is to have an architecture for uh, the data center. So we're not, we're not talking about point products. We're talking about an architecture that fits together and, and works together. And it's an architecture which is network centric. So at the heart of that, of that architecture is, is the network. I think we've all seen over the last uh, few years the data center gravitate to 
towards the network because it gives you efficiency and it enables you to deploy your applications and services far more, far more quickly. So our strategy here is to put the network right at the heart of the data center. And that manifests itself in lots of different ways. I mean, we've seen it over the years with people starting to do storage area networking and so on. We've seen it with people starting to do server, server virtualization and so on. There's been this trend uh, over, over many years now to gravitate towards the network in the data center. And essentially there are three different elements that we're trying to pull together here. One is the compute environment, or the unified computing environment. One is a fabric, so that's the switching fabric that you have in the data center, which is a unified fabric. And one is a management layer, so it's pulling together all of that management so you, can, so you can manage the entity as a whole. All of that is starting to gravitate and pull in towards the, towards the, network, uh, towards the network. So we're building a data center architecture which is network network century and all of the technologies that you've seen us you know, release over the last uh, few years and will release into, into the future, they fall into that overall architecture. So you can see uh, your UCS uh, B and UCS uh, C series, your Blade and the, the, and the rack mount compute, so compute technologies fall into the unified computing part of the architecture. We've all we've got the Nexus uh, technologies, we've got the NBS portfolio, which is part of the unified fabric. And technologies like uh, like Bounty and other management software that we have as director, they map into the unified um, director, the unified management part of the architecture. So our strategy is to have this overarching architecture for the data center, which makes it easier for you to plan for today and, in, and into the future. I don't think I don't think anybody can do a, a presentation about data center without talking about cloud. So here's, here's, my, here's my cloud. Here's my cloud slide. slide. Uh, cloud means all different things to, to different uh, to different to different people. It means different things to different types of uh, uh, customers. But our strategy here for cloud again is about choice. So we want to give you choices uh, in the uh, in the cloud. So whichever route you want to take, we want to have a set of solutions. That are, there to, that are there to support you. So whether you're building a private cloud uh, infrastructure, we have a great set of technologies including the, the FlexPod uh, reference architecture, which are great building models for building, for building, a, for building, private, uh, building a private cloud, as an example. Then we work with uh, service providers to give them the capability to offer public cloud uh, services, you know, build, build, on the Cisco, uh, build on the Cisco infrastructure. So, whether you want to continue and integrate the services and the infrastructure itself, or whether you want to totally outsource the services from the cloud, or whether you want a hybrid model, our aim is to offer you that choice. And I think one of the things that's really uh, important here, and is, that's, is a key part of our strategy, is that from a user perspective, that needs to remain as seamless as possible. So if, if you're a user you know, in a bank, you know, as an example, whether you're consuming services from your internal private cloud environment, or whether you're consuming uh, services straight from the public cloud, it needs to be seamless and integrated to the user. We're really going to get the adoption and the productivity that we need from, from, cloud, from, cloud, from cloud technology. So that's a big part of our strategy now and into the future, is to give that, that seamless experience to the, to the user. What we're also seeing, as Giorgio talked about earlier on, is this change in the data center landscape. And I think, I think I've seen this slide in various shapes and forms, at least for the last 15, uh, 15 years. But where people are, is changing very, very rapidly indeed. We started off with uh, the silos, silos of infrastructure, and I think you know, very few data centers uh, really operate that like that today. Where most people are today is moving towards this fabric-based architecture within the data center where they start to virtualize heavily all of the all of the infrastructure and the services in, in the data center. But where people are moving to now, where we want to move to in terms of our strategy, is to have a data center which is application driven. Our strategy is to deliver a data center architecture which is application centric. So whether you're talking about UCS or whether you're talking about the data center switching, we want to have that application centricity. 
because that's where the pain really is in the data center for that. Now, I remember, I remember talking to a um, CIO of a um, bank, it was a bank in the Middle East, it was around about 18, 18 months ago. And this was a CIO, and he was telling me that um, he was concerned because there was, there was a new, uh, new market uh, entry into, into the marketplace. He was offering uh, very, uh, very agile and cheap uh, financial uh, services over the, over the cloud. And uh, I was talking to this individual about what he needed to do to react to that change in the marketplace. Because they thought as a finance, financial institution, they were starting to lose business, they were starting to lose uh, uh, market share. So we talked talk, talk through the process you have to go through. So yeah, literally you'd have to go through some market research to identify what services you want to bring to market. Then you'd have to do some research about the application. Then you'd have to test it. Then you'd have to hire uh, new people. Then you'd have to build, build the infrastructure and build all the processes. That, that whole continuum could take in a year, a year and a half until he's got something that he's put into the marketplace that's going to compete with it, going to, going to compete with his competitor. So the promise here, really, for this application-driven data center is that applications can be provisioned autonomically across the data center. So the network, this network at the heart of the data center, it will already understand all of the attributes that the application needs to be successful, and the network will have the intelligence to autonomically provision that application Across the, across, across the network. So that's, that's where we're going, and we think that's, that's, where, that's where customers want to go into the future, is more towards this application and driven data center. And again, you'll hear a lot more about our strategy in a week. So look out for a big announcement on the 6th of November about application and centric infrastructure. We'll give you a lot more detail. One of, the, one of the ways that we want to manifest the application centricity is by turning the, the technologies that we have into a platform. So we, we want to give application developers the ability to write to the platform as a whole. It's not just about data center, by the way. It's about what we do in data center. It's what we do with our traditional routing and switching. It's what we do with our collaboration and our security technologies. We, we want to open up all of those products to give uh, existing and new application developers the ability to write to and to control that, uh, that platform with their, with their applications. It's actually quite a big change for Cisco yeah, vis a vis the way that we used to operate a few years ago. So we want the network to become an application platform and one of the ways we're doing that we're doing going to do that is for this uh, open network environment people refer to it as Cisco Cisco Wild. So this is this is our program to open up the capability to be able to provision all of the network with uh, with applications. It's a key pillar of our strategy moving forward. Okay so I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish today on, on a couple of Key conversations that we that we normally end up having with uh, customers. So we do a lot of uh, a lot of executive uh, briefings in, uh, in in London, and they're normally sort of you know, two or three three hour sessions. And here are just three of the topics that we normally end up covering in uh, in a lot of detail, which which may or may not res resonate with uh, with users. We'll talk about those those quickly. So this is where people have challenges, really, with the implementation of what they want to do in the in the data center. So, what is skills? So I've got one, I've got one slide on skills in our, in our executive uh, briefing, briefing deck. Often becomes the long, longest part of the conversation. So we can, we can spend an hour talking about skills in the, in the data center. I think organizations are concerned that they don't have the skills moving forward to be able to build out the data center architecture of the future. Because let's face it, we're moving from a world whereby you have silos of skills based on specific applications or specific storage or specific server expertise. You're moving to a world where we need skills in the data center where people have this architectural approach and they, they have expertise in how you, you deliver different sets of services, whether they're public or private or, or mixed across the data center. So there's a, there's a shortage of skills out there 
in, in the marketplace that, that we have and that our partners have a lot of information, a lot of expertise about how organizations are changing their skills and also changing their processes within, within the data center to, uh, to, to, move, uh, to move forward uh, with, uh, with confidence. Another conversation we have regularly is about core and context. We find lots of customers talking about core and context in terms of their applications and workloads. So they talk about core and context because they want to work out, as an example, which, which applications and workloads are they going to put into the cloud first. So generally organizations, they're, they're working through this methodology because they see a good potential to put, put into the cloud, whether it's public, whether it's private, the applications and workloads that they see as context within, within their organization. So this is, this is one of these key conversations, again, that's happening within, within, our, within our customers. Again, we do, and our partners do. We have a lot of expertise about how to drive these different types of core context uh, conversations within, within your organization. Lastly, but not least, and again, you know, Georgia, you, you talked about this um, earlier on, is what we find with the reference architectures, the uh, best practice with these integrated architectures is people tend to start with one workload. So people who are a FlexPod, um, as an example, they, they, they start with one critical workload. It's often BDI, actually. It's like one third of the FlexPods are out there in the marketplace. The initial workload was, uh, was, was BDI. So they start with, with one workload to test the environment. Then they build a plan to migrate different workloads onto that integrated platform over time. And we can talk about, we talked about earlier on the fact that customers that have the integrated architecture, they're increasing adoption very, very quickly indeed. So that's what we see. So taking one of these things, finding the sweet spot to get it into an organization gives you the opportunity to migrate more and more different applications and workloads to this integrated, to this integrated architecture. It gives you more and more economies of scale the more, the more you can uh, port applications and work closely integrating to the integrated architecture. Again, you know, we in conjunction you know, with, with our partners have a lot of experience of you know, how those different dynamics will work within the data center. So I think I'm, I'm at the end of my time. So I'd like to say thank you, thank you, uh, thank you very uh, much indeed.